Good day fellow investors. I recently received a lot of emails and in your comments there was a request for me to comment on Andre Jik's video about the massive crash coming ahead, an interview with legendary investor Raoul Paul. So they say in short and why the video got 400,000 views is probably the reason because they are telling you that you can invest only 5,000 into bitcoins and then over an uncertain period of time by doing nothing just putting your millennial hard-earned all the money you have 5000 by just investing that over a period of time you are not going to be at 10000 you are not going to be at 100000 you are going to make a million by investing in Bitcoin. Where am I? This is two times 500,000. That's a million. So that's the magic I'm going to discuss today. We're going to invest 5,000 and magically turn it into a million. If you want to be a serious person, we have 50 million here. So uh, if you want to become a billionaire, then we can talk billions too, but that's for the big boys. Let's discuss the notion of what's going on with the economy, macroeconomy, 5,000 into a million. Let's make you millionaires for starters. Now, apart from the jokes and the magic, uh, the video is very interesting because it touches on a lot of subjects. The macroeconomy, how is that going to impact the stock market, the main trends into what people invest in, how you can hedge yourself, protect yourself by investing in bitcoins, how those are the best way to save. This is quoting what Raoul Paul says, how the stock market doesn't always go up, how the Japanese market didn't go up since 1989. Very interesting topic, how baby boomers are going to sell their stocks and therefore put pressure on the stock market. And therefore after the crash coming from the upcoming recession, the market will go sideways for a long, long time time and also discussing a little, little bit what does it mean microeconomics how to predict the market and then just give you my commentaries on what's going on even on the bitcoin and i'm guessing you will be surprised by my commentaries because we are discussing here raul paul who is a macro hedge trader economist looking at the chart trying to connect the chart and fundamentals which is something very interesting to do but then he comes out on YouTube telling people to invest all their money they have usually like millennials that they invest 5,000 simply forget about it and they will become millionaires and that's something very dangerous because trading is one thing you need to know the right time to go in and even better you need to know the right time to go out let's start discussing the content so let me start by giving you a summary of the topics discussed in the video. So the doom loop explained, baby boomers will start retiring. The average year they are now are, is 66. They will start selling the pension funds to fund their retirement. The pension fund is invested in the stock market and the credit market, and that will put a lot of pressure. All fine, that is when stocks go up until the economy hits a recession, setting off the doom loop. So corporations will stop doing buybacks because they have been the only buyer of stocks over the last years. Baby boomers are selling their stocks to fund their retirement. Nobody is buying stocks right now. So doom and gloom ahead. Also pension funds have to sell stocks. Buybacks aren't there due to low cash flows in a recession. Nobody pays taxes. So no buyer of bonds except for the Fed stepping in and the Fed stepping in recently stopped the entire pension system from blowing up. There is again a group of people with all the assets. What should be fair is that though with those with those assets, the old ones give the assets to the millennials or the stocks go lower so that millennials can buy those assets at lower prices because millennials are stuck with record high valuations, 0% interest rates to, to make money from bonds and real estate at all time highs. So as a millennial with your $5,000, what should you do? Well, invest in Bitcoin because the economy will get worse. There will be a debt correction, insolvency crisis. Millennials will lose their jobs. 
So better have your 5,000 in Bitcoins. Young people are angry and they're opting out of the system. Let's fight the system by using TikTok, which is escapism. The solution, well, don't invest in stocks, don't buy real estate or buy your house and pay it off immediately if you have a career. But if you have 5,000 and the risk reward is very attractive of putting it all into Bitcoins, because what's the point of putting in, in stocks? Because you can put it all in crypto, forget about it and become a millionaire. This is very dangerous, but he, Raul, Raul Paul, is a hedge fund trader, been in the industry, no Soros, Druckenmiller, everybody, theory of reflexivity, and we'll see why he is promoting the Bitcoin and what you have to be careful if choosing that strategy. To each his own strategy, I'm not saying anything against it, I'll just explain the pros and cons and add a little bit of perspective on the theories explained. That is what we are here. So to sum up, you can invest 5,000 of your money into Bitcoins. The worst you can happen is you can lose half of it. So you can lose 2,500. The best that can happen, you can become a millionaire. All right. Let's start with the explanation and the topics. And then we'll see about count counting all the money in the very, very long term. We are all going to be billionaires, millionaires, trillionaires. It's so easy. Just put the money there and let the magic of finance do its work. Let's start with explaining, giving a bit more of perspective on all the topics discussed. God, I'm so rich. So another thing that's very dangerous is the heuristic basic. So heuristics is where we as humans are wired to explain things in the easiest way possible. So easy, okay, we don't not want to reach mental overload and we want to pick the easy solution. The easy solution is invest in the Bitcoin, put all my money there, forget about it. And in 10, 20, 30, 50 years, I'll be a billionaire. However, there is always more data to research. And on the doom loop, the fact that baby boomers retiring will be pushing the S&P 500 down by 50% or something like that. I remember writing an article, making a video a year, two years, three years ago about that, how boomer retirement based on publications from economic research from the Federal Bank of San Francisco, how they predict headwinds for the US equity markets in 2011 due to baby boomers retiring. And the theory goes as follows. So that's what they are using probably. So historical data indicates a strong relationship between the age distribution of the US population and stock market performance. As they reach retirement age, they are likely to shift from buying stocks to selling their equity holdings to finance retirement. Statistical models suggest that this shift could be a factor holding down equity valuations over the next two decades. This is the PE ratio and the middle age to old age ratio. And you can see how it is correlated. So when price earnings ratios were low, the ratio between middle age to old age were also, was also low because there were a lot of people retiring. So many selling stocks more than buying stock. When there was more middle aged person making money, there were more buyers of stocks and the price earnings ratio went up. So that's the theory. However, this was the prediction and you see what happened. The actual prediction was completely off over the last 10 years, since 2011 till now. The S&P 500 just went up, price earnings ratio is much higher than it was predicted. It was predicted that it will go to nine because of what happened. However, let's add a few facts more. And then you see, okay, Warren Buffett says interest rates are like gravity in valuation. If interest rates are nothing, values can be almost infinite. Interest rates are like gravity on stock prices. So to the chart back, stocks went up because interest rent rates went down and you compare values to what bonds are yielding to what you get on your savings account. And over the past 40 years, interest rates have been going mostly down. Thus, stocks have been going mostly up in valuation. Also, in the 1960s, interest rates were low, low valuations were high that changed in the 1970s. And then we are back 
at high valuation since the 1990s. Second theory, second topic is debt is sky high. We are at the end of the debt cycle. Governments print money to ease debt payments. Bondholders lose, assets go up. So I have discussed this uh, recently in a re video talking about Ray Dalio and his views on debt. And his views is that there is going to be a lot of money printing and that's going to push stocks actually up, not down. So that's in contradiction with what was the situation there. And we have seen that since the Fed started intervening, despite we are entering into the biggest recession since the Great Depression 80, 90 years ago, stocks have gone up and have been going up. Even today, as I'm filming this on Monday evening, stocks have been also up. And this is now very important from a macroeconomic perspective. You can choose to either invest from fear or from positivity. Now, investing from fear means investing into Bitcoin, gold, cash, running away from everything else that everybody else is investing and has been investing for a very long term because, you know, you want to time the market, you want to make the big bet in life, and you want to win by doing such a bet, let's say invest 5,000, become a millionaire by investing in Bitcoins because that's the best of bet of your lifetime. And that's one way of doing it. The other way is being positive. Recessions have been always there. It go up and down. Money loses value all, of, all the time because that's how it's created. If I buy good assets, good businesses, good real estate, I can accumulate wealth over time. So that's what we are doing on this channel. So if you're thinking long term, if you want to invest compound, not make the bets of your lifetime, then this is the channel for you and subscribe to this channel also. Perhaps it will give you a different perspective on life. However, please be careful with short, really to the point stories that are selling you something by telling you exactly what you want to hear. Invest 5,000, become a millionaire. Uh, the rich are taking advantage of you, poor millennial. You have to buy everything expensive, etc., etc. Because there is always another side of the story. So predicting recessions from fear, you will be right one time in seven years. The gray columns on this chart that I used again, the federal funds rate, those are recessions and those happen on average every seven years. If we look at the cycles, so recessions last a short time, on average in the last 70 years, 11 months, and expansions lasted almost 60 months. Things were happening faster in prior times in history, but if you look at the bottom line, you see, okay, this is what happens in recessions. And okay, if you invest based out of fear, gold, Bitcoin, etc., you'll probably do well in those recessions. But this will be the long-term outcome because you will not do well in the other six years when things go good. One dollar invested in 1802, Jeremy Siegel, stocks from the long run, would now become $700,000. Gold, one dollar would be, after 200 years, 4.5 dollars. Bonds, a little bit like, a little bit better, and bills, a little bit worse. So that's investing. Inflation would eat up a lot of your dollar, especially since it was depegged from gold. This is investing. You have to see where you want to be. Stocks annualized return over time 6.6%. And that's already also what you can expect from stocks now. And you have to see whether other asset classes will do better. Perhaps short time, but that's betting. And then you'll see how you react to betting. Also something very important. Now on the topic that stocks don't always go up, comparing the stock market in Japan. This is the stock market in Japan, 1989. There was the bubble and since then stocks never recovered. But look at the long-term line. Long-term line, stocks did go up, did pay dividends, did grow, did compound, and there are pretty rich people in Japan too, no matter the huge boom that happened in the 1980s. 
Price earnings ratio 1988-89 was above 50, 60, even 100 for some companies. That's why stocks didn't beat their previous highs, not because of other things, but because the price earnings ratio were sky high and now the price earnings ratio is pretty low with price earnings ratio hitting rates of below 15, below 20 for many Japanese companies. In Europe, similarly, they say the stock market didn't go up since 2000. Well, it didn't, but look at what it didn't since 1986. So it depends on valuation, price earnings ratio in Europe, in the UK, in the US, price earnings ratio were above 20, 25 in the 2000s with the dot-com boom especially. Now, Bitcoin. As an investor, when I look at Bitcoins, I see no dividend, I see no yield, no use using in transactions. I never bought or never was paid with Bitcoins. It's not a, an option easy. Maybe it will be in the future. Okay, there is 16, 18 million of it going to 21 million and that's it. And that means, okay, Bitcoin, it depends on how somebody else will pay, how much somebody else will pay for that in the future. So if you buy it now for, where is my 5,000? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I have already, or only millions. If you buy it now for 5,000, the fact that somebody will buy it for a million later, that only depends on the other person 20, 30, 50 years from now and what happens to the Bitcoin. So that's betting, it's not investing. And if you decide to bet, you have to do it properly, like traders, Goldman Sachs X traders do it. And that's based on something called trading, charting. George Soros was the legendary investor there, Stanley Drucker on Miro. And let's dig into the strategy with Bitcoins a bit more. So a former hedge manager retired at 36, give his outlook for 2017 and explains why a recession could be on the horizon. Yes, a recession came 2020, but not because of predictable things, but because of unpredictable virus related things. And then now recently he started selling the idea of a 1 million Bitcoin price level and in just three years and it's the biggest trade of our lifetime. So better put our money on Bitcoins. Be careful, don't pick the easy solution, understand what's going on. So you as millennial have been tricked by the boomers. What's the best investment out there? Easy, you invest 5,000. Yes, you can lose 2.5,000, but you can be a millionaire too. That's such an easy thing to sell to the YouTube millionaire audience. Be careful about that. And then very interesting, I always research, okay, who is telling me the story? So 2019, 2020, he really promoted Bitcoin. So when those were cheap, so probably those that followed did make a lot of money as the price of the Bitcoin went up. But 2018, so just two years ago, one year and a half, the same person was telling how it reminds him of the dot-com in 2000, great ideas, flawed business models, but eventually out of the ashes, the phoenix rose. So it's all about timing here and nailing the right timing and what's going to get out of that. Now he pivots on that hard on Bitcoin and that's where you have to invest your money. I read here an article, what is the reasoning behind that? So he moved 25% of his portfolio to Bitcoin recently because it's a huge societal change that's coming from all of this virus. The largest insolvency event in history is going to happen. The Great Depression will come within months. That's his prediction. Therefore, there are the printing of money with all the stimulus packages that Donald Trump signed, two trillion, now again, probably another half a trillion, etc. And his portfolio is repositioning at 25% Bitcoin, 25% gold, 25% cash, and 25% for trading opportunities. 
the situation, current situation with the coronavirus will be the biggest economic event of our lifetimes and therefore we should put our money into bitcoins. And this is a chart I really want to discuss with. Bitcoins behaves the opposite of the stock market. So it goes up extremely fast as speculators are running in to catch the wave up. Then as it has to stop at some point due to exuberance and people start selling, then it goes slowly, slowly down. The stock market does the opposite. It goes slowly, slowly, slowly up and then people sell in panic. Here people buy in panic because it should be a hedge against whatever goes on with monetary policy. Then when it starts to go up, it goes up very fast and then it goes down again. So if this crisis continues, we can see Bitcoin going up very fast if people start buying it like crazy. And that's the only option out there. However, I'm not really agreeing on the fact that it is the only option out there. I would say that it doesn't produce anything, it doesn't have a dividend, it doesn't have a yield, I cannot lend it out, the banks don't lend it out, so it might be something in the long, long distant future, it might not. Thus, it's a bet. And therefore, you need to be a speculator to do that bet. Or you are an investor and you do other things. And that's my conclusion here. At some point, the millennials buying it for 5,000, 10,000 now will start selling it. Who will be the buyer? Governments, perhaps. Why? It's to make the millennials rich so they are going to buy your bitcoins? Perhaps. You never know what can happen in this crazy world. But you are speculating on the greater fool. Somebody that will pay much more to take you off your bitcoins and give you dollars or some other currency that you are aiming for. So you're buying one Bitcoin and 10 years later you will sell one Bitcoin and you hope that it will give you a million dollars that from your invested 10,000. So you are again hoping of making a lot of money in dollars, not Bitcoins. So you're not hoping of, oh, I'm going to invest one Bitcoin, I'm going to end up with 20, 30 Bitcoins. And that's a very tricky situation. That's a very tricky strategy to bet your money, especially if it's all of your money. And now somebody says, oh, but if I just lose 5,000 is nothing. Let me show you this. This is from Sequoia Fund, just was researching Google, their top position. And this is 10,000 invested 50 years ago. It became much more than a million. So 4 million, so 5,000 was 2 million. S&P 500, again, 5,000, 700,000 over 50 years. This is the stock market, you can do better, you can do a little bit better. And yes, you can turn 5,000 into millions by investing too. So if you're an investor, stick to this channel. If you are not an investor, if you are a speculator and you want to speculate on Bitcoins, you want to speculate from fear, you want to protect yourself with gold, with Bitcoins, with cash, well, do that if it fits you. But I have seen so many that did that bet in 2011 on gold and waited years just to break even. And they are fortunately for them breaking even now, nine years after, nine years that we have double, tripled our money. So that's investing versus speculating to each his own. But I'm happy to share my thoughts here. And I hope that see that people see the danger of speculating versus the long-term benefits of investing. Thank you for watching. I'm looking forward to your comments. Subscribe, click that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.